Let's all give Jesus a wonderful round of applause. My dear friends, this is one more opportunity that the good Lord grants us this day to be gathered here and to be in contact with the Lord. And we have been talking about such an important subject these days, which literally makes my heart tremble. Every week it seems as if the Lord is giving us some kind of, some kind of platform so that we can go on top of it and call upon his holy name. Now before I begin, I want you to take a look. It's something we saw last service. It's in the book of Deuteronomy. The chapter is number 23. And the verse we're going to read is number 14. Take a look at what God said. Those who have already read this will read again for the 10th time. But for those who never read it, this is about the 8th time we're talking about this subject. And it says, For the Lord your God walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and give your enemies over to you. What God says here is so beautiful. The camp that we are in that the Bible refers to is the work of God. In those times, they were in the desert. There were about three million people there. And the Lord told them that he was walking in the midst of their camp. And it is the same thing with us. We are not just three million. We are much more than three million. We are in more than 80 countries. So we have formed our camp for us, not just when we are here in the face show, but also when we are working, when we are resting at home, Whatever we are doing, we are the people who are under the protection of the Lord God. And he is walking in the midst of our camp. And he is very agile. He has all the power. He comes with treasures. He comes with abilities. He comes with all of his power to operate whatever is necessary in our lives. But now, why is he walking in the midst of our camp? To deliver us from any of the enemy's works? Sometimes we don't even notice it, and in eternity we might see it. How many times the enemy has set up traps for us, and when we were about to fall into those traps, God made us change our direction or make the trap simply disappear. Maybe he put his foot in the trap, looked at the devil and said, do it, and you will see what is going to happen, and the trap wouldn't work at all. So he walks in the midst of our camp to deliver us from evil. If you are going through any kind of problem in your life, start praying to the Lord this way. Lord God, you are not far from us. You are among us, Lord, walking. You are not standing still, God. You are doing exactly what you have promised us. So come to us, God, and operate. Destroy the forces of evil and lead us to victory. He came to deliver us. And it also says here, and the Lord does not lie. He says that he also comes to give your enemies over to you. Brothers and sisters, there is no evil demon that can hide itself from you when you are full of the Holy Spirit of God and when you begin to pray. And you can pray with a lot of confidence because God gives your enemy to you after being defeated so that you can defeat him yourself and rebuke him from acting in your life again and be blessed by the Lord. Our Lord God has the capacity in every sense to do everything that he promised. Today, no matter where you are in the world, no matter who you are, prepare yourself to assume yourself in the Holy Word of God. But how am I supposed to act, Dr. Swise, for me to be blessed by God? I would like you to open your Bibles to the book of Psalm, chapter number 32, because there is a special message here that I want you to study with all of you. We are going to take a look here at what God promises to do in our lives, because we all have a path that we need to, need to follow. We have a decision that needs to be made. And we are going to start following this path. But how are we going to get to the path if we don't have the light to guide us there? If we don't know anything about the spiritual world, we are like sheep that belong to the Good Shepherd that guides them to safety. In the good book of Psalm, chapter 32, verse 8, the Lord gives us a direction saying, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. The way that you should go, that you have to to go through to be able to do the Lord's will. You don't know what way it is, but God said that he will instruct you. You will receive instructions from the Lord. And you are going to learn how to walk the way he wants us to go. And we have to obey the instructions. It's the work that you have to do. Do you know what that represents to us? Complete success in life. But I can't hear what the Lord is saying. But many people are forgetting. They are forgetting that they need to seek the Lord God, walk in his presence always, do the Lord's will always, so that when the necessary moment comes, you will have capacity to listen to the Lord because the commandments that the Lord gives us are the wisdom and the understanding that God grants us. 
You won't receive the instructions if your arms are crossed like this, putting your legs on top of the table in front of you while you're in school of the Holy Spirit of God, and you are just there without a care in the world. No, you will be instructed by God when you have his commandments and fulfill them. Fulfill them and keep them. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. So the Lord's eyes, they will guide you through his holy words. And what do you need to do? What do you need to take possession of? In what moment do you have to pray a little bit more? And sometimes the Lord wakes you up in the middle of the night. But God, I'm very exhausted. Not today, please. Don't ever do that again if you have already done it. The Lord God woke you up at night. You felt his call. Father, I will prepare myself. And then I got up in the middle of the night, changed my clothes, put gel in my hair. I even brushed my teeth, washed my hair, brushed my hair, and prepared myself to have an encounter with the Lord. And it was four in the morning and I was there speaking to the Lord and opening my heart entirely to him. And when the presence of the Lord is felt, tears begin to fall. Brethren, walking with the Lord is very beautiful. Our dear Father, he is perfect. He is complete. God is simply amazing. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 48, we have an amazing message from the Holy Spirit of God for our lives. The verse we'll read is verse 17, and it is written, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. So we have absolutely nothing that we should be worrying about, about just like we read in Psalm 32, that we will not be able to get to where we need to go. Attend to what the Lord has ordered and fulfill all of his commandments. Let's go because he is the Lord. He's our redeemer and he teaches us. So it will be his fault if we learn something the wrong way or our fault if we don't pay attention. Let's say that you want this, God, I want to walk alongside you. I want to understand the Bible. I want you to guide my entire life. So then you pay attention, but no information comes from the Holy Bible. Uh, I think God has a few problems. No, God will give you the information. But there are times that what God reveals to us seems to be something that is so weak because Dr. Swadis, I wanted something big like a voice. You don't have to choose the way God is going to say it, but if he told you something, do what he says. God asks you to do something that seems insignificant. Attend to his commandments, believe. But he promises to do everything that is necessary. And he knows exactly how to do things that are necessary because God is the creator of all things. From a tiny little insect that has its own life, that knows how to protect itself from the predators, that knows how to search for food, that knows how to find their little babies, to something of the most complex subject that scientists are cracking their heads to figure it all out. All of that is part of God's plan. And to think that this world filled with so many laws need to be obeyed was created by nothing is so foolish. When you see the hundreds of thousands of airplanes flying in the sky and every now and then some kind of accident happens, and all that is part of God's plan. And these things happen sometimes because the person responsible doesn't see what he's doing. Sometimes it might be the mechanic that left something loose or didn't tighten the screws very well, which he should have done. Or maybe the pilot that went to sleep and left his co-pilot in control. Sometimes something might happen to the system that makes him pilot the plane manually like in the past, but he wasn't trained properly and things could go wrong. But if we allow God to work just like he worked before because it was all done by him, all you have to do is believe that God will give you the revelation and he will. And he is being very clear here that he is. I am the Lord your God, you can be certain that he is, who teaches you to profit. The Lord will never teach you something that is useless. But I don't understand. I have no need for this blessing. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. Because there might be a problem in the future and God has already seen it. And you held on to that blessing. You face this problem. You win. And what happens after that? You are victorious in other things. Many times, folks, we have stories of the people of God that when the enemy came and the man of God went to look for resources where he shouldn't have looked. And because he went looking for resources and the Lord allowed the enemy to approach this man and surrounded him. And when he went looking for resources, he was defeated because he was going to win that battle and be victorious in the other. And we have so many examples like this one. So then 
What we need to do is take hold of the Lord's orientations because everything he teaches us is to profit and who leads you by the way you should go. In the following verse, he says this, Oh, that you had heeded my commandments. Then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Dr. Swadis, does this mean that God is vindictive? They didn't take heed of, of his commandments and so he didn't give them peace. No, brethren, it was because the instructions were inside the commandments. The moment that they would fulfill the commandments, and this serves for us as well, they would acquire such a wisdom, such a capacity, that there is where the Lord transmits everything. I'll say it again, the Lord sometimes allows things to happen so that we can stand up, stand on our feet to face that problem. And while we face this problem, we grow so much in understanding that our other problems that seemed like there was no solutions, we receive wisdom and that problem becomes nothing. This is what the Lord is telling us. Ah, that you had heeded my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river, so calm, and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. It would be very powerful. It's been discovered already in a few countries how to extract electricity from the waves of the sea. And it comes and goes, that little noise of the wave coming to shore, that has a tremendous power and it produces a lot of electricity. And there are many more things that they will discover. There is nothing in our world without a purpose. And God is allowing these things to be discovered. Actually, the Bible even says that. I was a youngster when I first read it and I was so impressed. And my generation, our generation, those who are like me remember how these things came about. When I was born, there was no television in the world. It came out in 1948 and I was born in 47. When I was born, a while back, I told you that the first radio that I saw, portable, it was about this big in size and it had 32 batteries inside it. Those big ones that you use in flashlights, those extremely big ones on the back and it was very heavy. Today you have radios that are the size of a box of matches and with a lot more power than the other ones. In other words, I read and it was written that in the end of times, knowledge will increase itself and it won't be slow. What we are seeing is something serious. It's growing and growing. And it is today, for instance, they were foreseeing that in a few years, the system that we use, that we have internet access through Wi-Fi, it will stop being used soon because they already have something 10 times as fast. So I said, oh my goodness, they're discovering and they will discover even more things. Is there more they can discover? Yes, much more. In Korea, the internet already comes. Um, not, not through waves, but through the electricity cables. A few seconds it's already in your house. And there are many more, I'm just talking gibberish because I don't understand anything about science. I'm just saying what I read, but I'm talking about we keep getting into other people's business. Let them tell us everything about science. Oh, that you had heeded my commandments. Take heed. Take heed because he is saying that he does not teach you things that are useless. He will not teach you useless things. Ah, that you had heeded my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your descendants also would have been like the sand and the offspring of your body like the grains of sand. His name would not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. Let's allow God to be our teacher. If he promised us something, then he knows the reason. This is something so serious that the Apostle Paul told the people in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. This is what he said. You see, Paul understood that. And when I understand it and you understand it, we have to do exactly what God is teaching us. Now here in Colossians chapter number 1, verses 9 and 10, he says this, For this reason we also... Since the day we heard it, speaking of their faith, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. And here is Jesus talking once more about walking. He walks with worthiness in the midst of our camp, but we have to walk with worthiness and dignity before the Lord God. The Apostle Paul saw how important that was and he said, since the day we heard it of their faith, do not cease to pray for you, praying for the Colossians. 
and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So this should be our target. We don't have to be like those kinds of Christians who only come to church to sit down and listen, who only come to church to bring their family pictures and say, God bless all everybody in my family. This is not how it works. God, I need to be filled with, with what? He says here, take a look, with the knowledge of his will, brethren. I have to be filled with the knowledge of his divine will. Now, how is this going to be transmitted to me? Through prayer, it's a start. Because I pray, God sees that I want this, and I start reading the Bible, and the Bible starts opening up before my eyes and your eyes as well, before all of us. And the more we are learning and the more we are practicing the lessons, because if you don't practice them, if you are not someone who practices the Word of God, you will then resemble one of those people that look in the mirror and see their faces every day. How old are you? Every morning you look in the mirror. You wash your face, you scratch your eyes, fix your eyebrow, move around, brush your hair, brush your teeth. <clears throat> you got ready. What is your appearance? Oh, I forgot that, yeah. We remember everybody else, but not ourselves. This is how the Holy Word of the Lord is. It's like an eternal mirror. When you look at it through the Word, you see yourself as a winner. This is how God wants me to be. But you stray away from the Holy Word of God. No, you need to have knowledge of the divine will. What are the plans of God for my life? What does he expect me to possess? What can I do in favor of mankind, of the human being? What can I do to help so that others can get to know the Lord God and be blessed by him? The Apostle Paul, knowing that, said that, Since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled. Filled with what? With the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. If you are not full of knowledge of the will of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, you will not walk um, that, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him in everything. The way we speak to others, the way you act, the way you dress yourself. This is very important, folks. In the way you greet people, the way you look, the way you negotiate, the way you live life, the way you eat food, the way you practice a sport, the way you raise your family and God. You have to please God in everything. But Dr. Swadis, I want to, but I can't do it, of course. You have to seek the Lord first. No one can become a doctor if they haven't studied everything since preschool, grade school, then high school. Then we later took the admission test. We passed and got into medical school. And then you begin to learn about medicine. Then you did a residency. But you weren't that student that just went there to get a grade. No, you went there to learn. Then you can begin practicing medicine, give medication, do some sort of surgery and help others. Spirituality is the same thing, folks. We have to be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord. If you don't have that knowledge, you will not walk with worthiness, with worthiness. You will not see the opportunities that the Lord opens for you. You will not see other people's needs. Sometimes just one simple word, one simple word, you can change a life. There is a case that happened to me 12 years ago. I went to the Ministry of Communications. Pardon me for those who already heard the story, but it's important for me to tell you of the courage that I had. I was waiting in line and there were three or four people in front of me to show their identity, to get a name tag, to put on their clothes so that they could get inside. It was a sticker. So I was waiting and came a woman from the other side. She looked about 30 to 32 years old or so. She was an employee. So she came walking and my eyes hover, uh, hovered over her. And I was looking at her and turning and I said, excuse me, can I have a word with you? She stopped and said, yes, sir. I have a gift that I want to give you. It was something crazy how I could have done something like this. So she said, okay, sir. Then I opened up my bag and I had two magazines. At that time, we used magazines and I gave her one. And I had no idea which magazine I gave her, but I felt from God that I had to give it to her. I saw the opportunity. So she thanked me and I put everything away. And I think people were saying, he's a bit crazy, isn't he? A man passed by the lady and he didn't give it to him. He gave it to the lady. I could have given it to the man also, but God told it was just for her. But then, okay, I was there talking to my friend who has the boss there. He was my friend and we grew up together. And all of a sudden his secretary walked in and said, Ambassador, 
There's a young lady crying outside and said she wants to speak to this missionary. He went like this. I said, send her in. Can she? Yes, sir. She walked in and said, missionary, you are of God. Oh, yeah? Why am I of God? You're not going to believe this. It's been a year and a half since my and my husband got separated. And I haven't done anything wrong. But today I said I was going to make him pay. I scheduled to meet a man at 4 p.m. It was about 2 o'clock there. Missionary, I passed by you and you gave me this magazine that we had written, the adultery that was the message. Brethren, only God can do something like this. She said, I rebuke that I belong to Jesus and the enemy will now lead me to that sin. That young lady cried so much. The ambassador was confused looking around. I said, don't worry, this can only be God's work. My brethren, you will not be able to see God guiding your life. You will miss so many opportunities. Did you know that sin could have led her to the gates of hell? And this could have happened if she sinned, did not repent and died. I gained a soul to the Lord in the last minute. But how about the sadness that she would carry afterwards? He did it so, I did it also. He is worthless. I am worthless also. She would have that burden for the rest of her life, the trauma. Oh, how many situations could be avoided if we simply chose to be guided, instructed by the Lord, learning from God about which way we need to go because everything that he teaches us is useful. And the Apostle Paul said that he is praying, Paul, you have so many things to do, but I'm crying out in your favor so that God may give you what God does need to give them, the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing his knowledge of God. God is good, folks. I am very grateful because he is preparing people to be victorious in life. Prepare us today, Lord. These are all of your people. Let's go to the real life drama segment for today. Sister Etelvina spends 23 years of her life dragging herself with a cane after being run over by a car. They took me to the hospital, a Christian hospital, and they put me on top of a table there and did all the exams and the doctor said, look, the problem is in your spine. It was damaged. Two days later, I grew this big. She had to stay in bed for months. Many of my friends that came to visit me kept saying, oh, Etelvina, you're going to die. And I kept telling them that I wasn't going to die. God is going to heal me. The Lord is my doctor. We needed a lot of help from our family to help her to change her clothes, take showers, eat, and all those things. She wasn't able to stand up for a long time or going outside to water the flowers and other things that she liked to do. So I couldn't walk at all. But with the cane, I could walk a little bit. Then I got on my feet started walking. She even went back to work, but she had a lot of difficulties, even with the medications because they weren't working. Everything that happened was my fault because one day I was so angry, so irritated that I said, if there really is a God, if he really does exist, he will make me stop working. I don't want to work anymore. It's too much suffering. When a person questions the existence of God, the power of our Lord God, it's never good. The devil, who is our main adversary, cannot read what we are thinking but he can take our words everything we say to use against us but i took into consideration my faith and asked god to forgive me in june me. of 2014 etelvina gets to know the grace of god church and she made an important commitment with the work of god so then i made a commitment to god the day that i enter a church i will start sponsoring then after she started to attend the services she started to get better periodically on October 1st, 2014, Dr. Suarez goes to a city nearby to take the word of God to the brothers of that state. With faith in her heart, Etelvina doesn't think twice and goes towards her blessing. My daughter came here, gave me a ride to church in her car. She took me and my granddaughter. I wanted to sit up front. They said, no, we can't sit up front because it's too hard. There's a lot of people. That's not true. Those who arrive first get to sit in the Take front. Take a look at our sister waiting for the service to start. In the moment of prayer, the works from the enemy fall to the ground and she's finally delivered of all evil. So your companion is this cane here, sister? Yes, the cane. You couldn't walk without it. It was very hard. It was hard. Walk. But did you walk here today, sister? Yes, I did. But I asked my granddaughter to bring it to me because... So, then, so then let's do this in the name of Jesus. My sister shall we walk we're all going to do the victory lap come on sister follow me 
We're all going to do the victory lap again. 23 years, sister. 23 years. It's a new life that's beginning for you today. I got out of there completely healed with a very good mood, with the will to live. There was no place for me to sit in the bus, so I stood up the whole time, something I couldn't do before. I got off the bus all by myself and said to my granddaughter, no, 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 don't help today me. Today she can water her flowers, which she loves to do. And it was something she couldn't do before. I have to do my work now. I have to wash my dishes, clean the floor, which I couldn't clean before, water my flowers and move them. I can move them here and there. That red vase, I got it off the table and put it outside. I can do everything that I couldn't do before. Glory to God. Nothing hurts anymore. I have been healed in the name of Jesus. 23 years of suffering, brethren, and God operated in her life. Brethren, we have to learn how to pray and ask for this blessing that Paul said so that we can walk with worthiness and dignity before the Lord God, observing everything the Lord does, handing out a magazine or making a prayer, inviting someone to church, and then you go and you are able to deliver someone from evil. It is registered in the heavenly book. Jesus said that whoever gives a cup of cold water to a young child who believes in him will receive a reward from God. Now imagine someone who leads someone to be healed, to salvation, to prosperity. Let's say someone was about to commit adultery at four in the afternoon. Two in the afternoon, you hand this person a pamphlet and the person says, I rebuke that. I will leave the temptation. I won't go. I won't go. I belong to Jesus. And only God knows what he is doing for that person. What does God want to do with you? You'll be an instrument in the hands of God, folks, a real instrument for him. Let me pray for those who are at home. God, my prayer is for all of those people who are at home that are in desperate need of a deliverance, of a healing, of a solution to a problem. So now my faith is united with the faith of these people and I paralyze all of the works of the enemy in these lives and I order now, evil, let go of these people. Get out of these lives. Don't ever disturb them anymore in the name of Jesus.